Welcome back everybody, this is a video on how to make a pixel font for GB Studio, but more specifically it's a follow up to my Halloween cookbook video, where at the end of that I talked about how I'd want to speed up my workflow and this is how I figured it out. So if you didn't already know, GB Studio works in 8x8 pixels. Normally when you, when you create a background you want to be using the tiles and repeat the tiles in order to be as conservative with the tile count as you can in order to fit more in the scene. But as I talked about in my last video, um, that makes the font less readable and also means you are constrained to the 8x8 grid. So with this version, you can easily break beyond the 8x8 grid. You can make the pixel font as readable as you, as you want, um, but I'll show you how to do that now. So this is a website called BitFontMaker2, and I'll put a link in the description so you can use it yourself. But basically what it is, is a font maker, but it's for bitmap font fonts. And a bitmap font means pixel fonts, right? So this works at a very small scale, and I'll show you how to make it work correctly in GIMP after I've shown you this. Um, so basically I've made everything seven pixels high, and that's so there's a pixel space between each line. And obviously if you would, if you really want to minimize the space between lines, you would remove anything beneath this line and draw it above the line so that it doesn't drop down onto the next tile. Or if you don't care about that at all, you would um, you would just space the text more. But that obviously means you're getting less in a scene, which is up to you how you want to do it, but I'm just showing you how, how it works. And this red line on the left here, um, the only thing I've got passing that is the J, I believe, and just, just by one pixel. And so once you've put all in all of this, remember there's more pages as well. I haven't set up these other pages. Um, but they have all the other um, symbols you need to to make a font. Um, and then all you have to do is press build font down here and it will export as a TTF file. And if you're using Windows, I don't know about Mac, but if you're using Windows, all you have to do is right click on that downloaded file and then press install. And once you press install, you may have to reload GIMP. I'm not sure if it automatically works, but once you reload it, or if it already works, then all you have to do is find the font in the font drop-down list, and then you can be uh, writing with the font. If I press export here and look at the settings, you can see I've named it, and you obviously want to name it to you, put your own name on the author, and you can also have different uh, letter spacings. So imagine you automatically built in a one pixel gap. You may want to have a letter spacing of zero, or if, like me, you put up against this red line, one pixel works, or two if you have letters that go back a bit too much. Um, but it's up to you. Uh, you can also make it monospace, which means it doesn't have a uh, an automatic letter spacing. It just, each letter takes up, for example, this says 14 pixels. And the word spacing might be important as well. I think automatically is five. You might want to reduce it down to four. Um, but obviously it's up to you and how big you make your font. So looking back into GIMP here, we have our font. And as you can see, I've made the size of it uh, 15. And GIMP can be a bit strange because it has this box here and this box here. Yeah, so what I found is that the font size 15 works perfectly. 16 is a bit, um, is off by one pixel vertically, it seems like. But 14, and it's almost unreadable. Anything less, and it's obviously um, too small. And anything bigger is also messing with the, the pixelation. So I believe that 15 is the perfect size for the font. Uh, you also want to turn off anti-aliasing here. Um, I believe the hinting only works when you have anti-aliasing on anyway, so you don't have to worry about the hinting. Um, and obviously, if you have multiple lines of, of, of text, then you need to use this um, button over here to reduce or increase the space between the lines. And this is what I was talking about, how if you have it going too many pixels beneath the line, you see this pick the P on pixel, then it will, if you want to have it sat on each line, it will then mix together and be less readable. But if you stretch it out, it becomes more readable, but you take up more space. So obviously these settings are something you have to experiment with yourself to find what's best for you. But this should exponentially increase the speed that you create large text dependent um, background images in your GB Studio games. 
So I'll put my patrons up on screen right now. Thank you so much for you guys. You guys are the best. Remember to like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe if you haven't already. I hope this video was useful. Let me know what you thought in the comments and what you want to see next. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.